This is the Spirit and Wellness Show. News and information from a higher perspective. With your host, Harry Wilkinson. Yes, hello and welcome to the Spirit and Wellness Show. My name is Harry Wilkinson and I am your host. And this is the show where we take uh, a look at the days and weeks events happenings in the news happenings internationally uh, in the media in technology everything that we hear about or interact with during our week and we take a step back and we look at it from a higher perspective uh, you know right now uh, a lot of research is showing that one of the big uh, stressors for people is media and what the media uh, comes across uh, with and that can include uh, you know your 24-hour news stations it can include your social media uh, we seem to be uh, inundated uh, with a never-ending barrage of uh, information via our new technologies, which are amazing and awesome and uh, certainly do a lot of good to help us connect and to be a, f a, a real physical representation of, of the connectedness that we all share uh, at the highest level of our being. So I don't mean to uh, in any way uh, disparage what technology brings to us but along with it, we also have to recognize that there are uh, some downsides or uh, possible downsides, depending on how you deal with it. And one of the things that uh, people report is uh, you know, stress and anxiety from interacting with the media. And so taking a media break is a great idea uh, to do. But, uh, you know, uh, unless you're willing to live on a mountain mountaintop, um, you're not going to be able to disconnect yourself entirely uh, from that experience. So, in uh, my approach in this show, and I, I think of it as a wellness approach, uh, because one has to have a healthy way to inter interact with uh, these stressors in the environment and uh, neutralize them so that they uh, don't trigger those buttons, that they don't cause that level of stress. And one way to do is to uh, actually go into those stories, those situations that uh, seem to be causing you stress and to recognize the truth of them. And that's what happens when you take that step back and you look at it from the perspective of that which we are creating. Uh, that which is essentially an illusion, although we participate in it uh, as though it were real and it feels real in our participation. At the highest level of our beings, we know this to be a creation a, uh, you can think of it as like a virtual game uh, in which you are in uh, surroundings and dealing with situations uh, and interacting with them but you yourself are not <laughs> uh, the character you are in that uh, vir virtual reality world you are more than that and that's the analogy I like to use to explain how that works. When you look at these things from the perspective of uh, creations and you begin to take your energy back from them, you see how it empowers you and it changes you. 
and you're no longer feeling stress about it but now you are feeling empowered now you are feeling um, uh, able to cope and just that meditative process of going into those uh, those things those uh, things that are bringing up the uh, stressed stressed feelings and uncomfortable feelings just going into it and doing that process of recognizing the truth of it as an illusion as a creation and taking your energy from it without expecting anything else no changes or anything like that just going in feeling it taking your energy and uh, appreciating the the depth and the level uh, and the uh, brilliance of the deception of the illusion uh, of how real it seems and feels at times just that process actually changes things but you don't need to go into it with that intent you just need to go into it as part of your wellness uh, approach as part of your ability to uh, interact with uh, those things that uh, might not uh, initially <laughs> um, bring you much pleasure. Uh, you know, the media has their job to do, uh, which is presenting you with information, but um, besides that, uh, their main job is to make money for their advertisers. And they do that by presenting the stories that they feel will get the most attention and by presenting them in a way that will get them the most attention. And uh, that way tends to usually involve uh, pushing trigger buttons for people, getting them anxious or concerned or upset or, uh, you know, other very powerful feelings that, uh, you know, sort of instantly uh, grab your attention. And so we need to be able to counter that, and we counter that through that meditative process uh, that I explained to you. So, on with the show, we've been talking about... Um, for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about some very heavy stuff <laughs> uh, about how uh, the new research in psychedelics such as psilocybin and LSD that's being done are showing how uh, your brain can change and how you can experience spiritual uh, experiences, other dimensions, through the use of these chemicals in a controlled environment. And these are, you know, science journals that are talking about this. This, this, this isn't some, uh, you know, uh, woo-woo uh, website uh, about spirituality. These are uh, scientific journals, <laughs> peer-reviewed articles and research that are talking about spirituality for maybe the first time. Uh, and uh, we were talking about Michael Pollan. He's an author who wrote a book about this new research. And uh, he explains in detail his surprise at coming across uh, science journals that talk about this kind of thing. Um, in fact, it's a whole new world for him. If, uh, you know, uh, unlike perhaps some of us who have been... Uh, uh, spiritual seekers for a while uh, this can, this comes as a sort of a revelation to him so we've been talking about that book and it's on my recommendations list if you go to my website which is uh, H. Wilkinson Media uh, it, uh, it talks about metaphysical media and it's one of our metaphysical media picks uh, so it's been uh, <laughs> a, a very heady <laughs> No fun really intended there. Uh, past few episodes. So we're going to take a little break from that and focus on uh, 
some wellness issues in particular uh, some wellness groups we talked about the slow food movement uh, so we're going to uh, explore that a little bit more uh, as that seem to have piqued uh, some curiosity out there so we're going to talk about the slow food movement and we're going to talk about uh, uh, another uh, kind of mute movement uh, that is gaining a lot of attention it's called forest therapy forest therapy and we'll look at some tips to help you through a uh, little late summer which you know interestingly enough even though it is still summer and a lot of people are kind of uh, plotting out vacations or going back and forth between vacations it still tends to be a rather stressful uh, time of year especially if you have kids or you are college age uh, really the back to school push begins almost right away and so that is uh, of course getting ready for that can be an enormous stress uh, stressful situation so we'll give some some tips on how to uh, to deal with that um, but first uh, just to uh, kind of uh, touch in or, or, or touch base with the uh, uh, with the topic we've been discussing uh, about the, the psychedelic movement and research um, I want to read to you something from the pollen book um, about how these uh, these uh, chemicals are described the names they use the nomenclature uh, the class of molecules to which psilocybin and LSD and mescaline and DMT and a handful of others including uh, 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 ecstasy or molly as it's sometimes called uh, belong uh, oh, the uh, class of, uh, of molecules belong uh, which they to which psilocybin and LSD belong has been called by many names in the decades since they have come to our attention initially they were called hallucinogens but they do so many other things and in fact full-blown hallucinations are fairly uncommon uh, when using these chemicals uh, researchers have gone looking for more precise and comprehensive terms uh, for these uh, for these chemicals the term psychedelics which is, uh, I mainly use here uh, this is Michael Pollan uh, as the author is uh, talking does have its downside embraced in the 1960s the term carries a lot of countercultural baggage hoping to escape those associations and underscore the spiritual dimensions of these drugs some researchers have proposed they instead be called entheogens from the Greek for the divine within entheogens well this strikes me as too emphatic okay uh, I kind of like it myself, but Mr. Pollen, uh, not so much. Despite the 1960s trappings, the term psychedelic, coined in 1956, is etymologically accurate. Drawn from the Greek, it means simply mind manifesting, which is precisely what these extraordinary molecule molecules hold the power to do. Well, mind manifesting is perhaps a term that uh, maybe feels more comfortable to someone uh, uh, like uh, Mr. Pollen who's maybe not quite comfortable enough although he's, he's exploring the spirituality he's not quite comfortable uh, enough with terms like the divine within so that's very interesting all right well you know in uh, future episodes perhaps uh, we will touch base again on that topic there's lots to talk about in it uh, and uh, so it's a, uh, a rich mine <laughs> for a conversation and discussion but let's go in and talk about the slow food movement because we we, we tapped on it a bit last week uh, what is it actually what does it mean um, basically 